<laughs> I love to think. I am a thinker. As a child, I loved going to school to learn. That's me right there. At night, I love reading cookbooks as bedtime stories. And on the tennis court, I analyzed my way through tennis matches. I love to think. And that's why I probably became a teacher. The thinking has gotten me into trouble. Over the years, I notice more and more tabs accumulating in my web browser. You all know what I'm talking about. Over the week, I would accumulate tabs of articles that I needed to read. And on the weekend, I would allocate specific time to read all these articles. I loved it, but it was becoming a bit of an obsession. And my Goodreads list, it was growing with educational books. Now, secretly, I did want to read a fiction book. But I didn't have time for those fantasy books. I needed to learn something. In fact, I was curious why people read fiction books. Maybe it's the scientist in me, but I wanted to know what did they learn. So I asked my friends this question, and their answers didn't convince me. They said, Oh, I love the imagery that comes into my mind. I love that I could delve in all, to the, in all these different worlds. Sorry, English teachers, but I think like a scientist, and I wanted to stay in this world and learn facts about this world. I was running after knowledge. I wanted to read the latest posts by leading educators. I wanted to know who was tweeting what. I was in a race for knowledge because I thought I needed it. I thought I needed it to feel worthy, to feel that I belonged. I love learning, but I had forgotten who I was learning for. So how did I stop this race to nowhere? Today, instead of looking into my computer and phone to see what else I needed to read, what else I needed to learn, I put up a mirror and I asked myself, what do I want to learn? And I stopped tying my self-worth to what I did and did not know. So I let go and I read a fiction book. And did I learn anything? Well, I didn't learn any hard facts or statistics, but I did learn that the experience made me happy. It was that simple of an answer. Now I know why people read about wizards. As Brene Brown, the author of Daring Greatly, and other great books on vulnerability says, I started showing up as my full self. And this is what I ask my students to do. This was at the beginning of the year when I asked my students to rate themselves on how they felt about science. Of course, you had those who loved science, and that's great. But I was more curious about those who didn't love science. He seems pretty happy about not liking science, right? <laughs> but he showed up, and he owned that three. And he was OK with that. I want all my students to show up as their full self so they can own their stories and learn to write their next chapters for themselves. Today. So many decisions are made for our students by their parents, 
their coaches, and even by us, their teachers. So no wonder when they leave us, they struggle to make decisions about what they're passionate about, their career paths, what makes them happy. Today, if we are to illuminate the next decade, we as teachers need to help our students show up as their full selves so they can learn to make decisions for themselves so they know what is the next right step for them. So when they do leave us one day, they know what makes them happy. Thank you. Thank you. Wow.